And I am, I'm so pleased tonight to be speaking on uh, Bill C-22, an act to reduce poverty and to support the financial security of persons with disabilities by establishing the Canada Disability Benefit and making a consequential amendment to the Income Tax Act. Madam Speaker, when I was thinking about this bill on my flight last night to Ottawa, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Bethesda Christian Association. Um, for the majority of my mother's life, Madam Speaker, my mom's volunteered with Bethesda and as subsequently as her child, I volunteered with Bethesda as well. My mom also worked for the organization for over 20 years. And working with Bethesda taught me a lot about humanity. Um, and it taught my family a lot about compassion and humility and respecting the rights of every single person. I have had the privilege of knowing one woman, Darlene, uh, who also went to the same church as me growing up uh, since I was born. And one of my favorite childhood photos is sitting at the family piano uh, with Darlene. And to know Darlene today has brought richness to my life. Um, Darlene lives with mental disabilities, and, but she lives life to the fullest. And she's taught me so much about just even for an outgoing person like myself to get out there and not be afraid to, to shake the hand of a stranger or, 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 or say something in church <laughs> at the appropriate time. Um, she's just brought so much richness to my life. But I also know that women like Darlene have also uh, have been challenged financially. Um, irrespective of government, we've actually seen a reduction in support staff and direct supports for women like Darlene uh, living with disabilities. And that's not good. And as a conservative, Madam Speaker, one of the tenets I hold to is that the government has a responsibility to take care of people who can't take care of themselves. And many Canadians living with disabilities, um, especially some of those with mental challenges like Darlene, really do need the support from taxpayers to live her best and her full life. And as a country as rich in Canada, I don't think that's a hard threshold to make. So I am pleased to say that I'll be supporting this bill today uh, for what I learned from Bethesda Christian Association growing up, Madam Speaker, and sorry, it's just a little hard to hear myself speak when the two speakers are having a little conversation there. <laughs> I'll just let you get in your seat, thank you. So as I was saying, I, I'm going to be supporting this bill, Mr. Speaker, um, because we need to do more to support those living with disabilities. But when I was looking at Bill C-22, um, especially under the regulation section, Section 11 of the bill, it says a lot, I'll just give a couple examples here, um, point A, respecting the eligibility criteria, point B, respecting conditions that are to be met in order to receive or to continue to receive the benefit, point C, respecting the amount of a benefit or the method for determining the amount. It goes on and on like this for about a page and a half of the bill. Um, but it doesn't say some of the things that people are looking for, and that is how much will they actually receive from the government under a Canada disability benefit? Secondly, what would a Canada disability benefit cost to the public coffers? And when will the disability benefit be costed? Another question upon reading the bill that I'm struck with is, what amount does the government plan to provide persons with disabilities through the Canada disability benefit? Thirdly, how does the government plan on coordinating the Canada disability benefit with other provincial benefits? Fifth, if this benefit is to operate in coordination with provincial benefits, how will the government ensure that there is no provincial disparity for those accessing the benefit in respect to the tax code? Another point, what will the eligibility be for the Canada Disability Benefit? Will it include those living with invisible disabilities? And how will that criteria be established? Will the Canada Disability Benefit be indexed to inflation? With the rising cost of inflation in this country, this is a big concern to many currently living with a disability. Another point, when, do you expect, when, when, should the, when should Canadians expect to start receiving the Canada Disability Benefit once the bill is passed? Currently the bill um, has the coming into force to be determined by an order in Council. Another point, since almost all information about the benefit is to be determined through regulation, Will the government be open to increasing 
parliamentary oversight outlined in the bill. Another point, how will the government ensure that the Canada Disability Benefit should consider the complex web of programs currently in place, which for many Canadians with disabilities can result in benefit cuts and higher taxes as a consequence of taking on work? I think especially in the context of veterans living with disabilities that that's a very important point. Another point, how will the government ensure that applying the Canada Disability Benefit is inclusive and not a difficult bureaucratic process? How will we make this form simple to fill out? And how will we ensure that the Canadians who need this support will get it as quickly as possible? And finally, how will the Canada Disability Benefit be impacted if there are changes to provincial or territorial programs? So, Mr. Speaker, I will be supporting this bill, but there are a ton of fundamental questions that the framework needs to answer when this bill is hopefully passed by Parliament and brought before what I assume will be the, human, uh, the HUMA Committee. So, with that, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to any questions, and thank you. I thank my honourable colleague and friend for the, for the speech and looking, looking forward to doing some, uh, some Netherlands friendship group, group whether, uh, whether or not he's interested. We've got some work to do and he's my co-chair, so uh, I'll be counting on, on his engagement there. Um, Mr. Speaker, my, uh, my friend uh, talked about how it's important as a Conservative to stand up and help people who need it most, people who don't have access to certain services. And I'm just curious, I'm glad that he's so engaged in this bill and I'm really thrilled to hear that he's supporting it. Uh, does that category of people, people who need it most, include families with young kids who can't afford to get their teeth fixed? I thank the Honourable Member from Milton for his question, but the debate today is on Bill C-22, not C-31. Um, as I mentioned in my speech on Bill C-31, we have to look at the inflationary impacts of what we're doing. And as I outline in the suite of questions I pose that I hope committee members in the government will be listening to, we need to do a full costing of this bill to see what impact it will have on Canadians and on Canadian taxpayers in the context of the inflationary period we are living within right now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question for the member is this. Does he think that the bill is well, con well constructed? Is it writing a blank check to the government? Should there be more criteria, more transparency on the government's intentions, and maybe more, more relevant, should the money be sent directly to the provinces because this is something that belongs in provincial jurisdiction? I think at this time that this bill needs a lot of work. I hope that the Bloc will support this bill and that we can study it in a committee. That way we can find which amendments are needed to make sure that the bill will work in a context of provincial programs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And today is the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, and over a million Canadians right now are living in poverty. Having a disability benefit is so critically important, but this government has failed people with disabilities again and again and again. Now they're asking people with disabilities to wait three years, and they presented a bill that doesn't actually tell us how much people will get or who will be included. Can the member speak to how vital it is that people with disabilities know how much they will be receiving? Who is receiving this benefit and when this benefit will come? And to the points raised by the member from Victoria, I think those are essential. Um, going back to Darlene, whom I, whom I mentioned in my speech, Darlene going out for coffee at Tim Hortons or an ice cream and a burger at McDonald's, she has to tabulate that every single month. She lives dollar by dollar. And Bethesda Christian Association, who supports Darlene, lives dollar by dollar as well. So yes, getting that critical information, when the benefit will come into force, how much people with disabilities will be living on is essential, and I, and I hope that that information is brought forward by public servants at committee as soon as possible, because there's no point going down this legislative exercise if we don't have answers to those fundamental questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my aunt was actually one of the residents of Bethesda, and so I'm, I'm, he may have run into her. Uh, she passed away a number of years back, but uh, it was interesting to hear that in his, in his speech. Um, one of the big concerns I have, uh, and I hear from the disabilities community, is just around uh, access to MAID and approval to MAID. And, and over and over, we're hearing of people who are 
um, in, in distress, but not necessarily terminal, um, accessing MAID. I was just wondering if you could address that as well. And, and thank you to my, my colleague from Alberta for uh, the land of milk and honey, as he likes to say, uh, for his question. Just last year, or this year, um, if I'm mistaken, a, a woman in my, in my community uh, received MAID because she couldn't find adequate housing. Uh, so what we need to do as a government, as a society collectively, is ensure that human dignity is respected. And we need to ensure that people living with disabilities have hope and have support. And I hope that this framework and with amendments at committee, we can get there, Mr. Speaker, and provide a new level of dignity and a new level of hope for those Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.